so uh, we've moved the gauge over here we've got our crush fitting in here make sure you put this lock nut on there first and if you look in here I've unscrewed the pressure sending unit and it's just got a typical fitting here and then on the end is where the wire clips for the signal back to the gauges and if you look up in here you can see I've screwed in the new fitting and the electrical wire is just kind of sitting there so now we're going to screw on this fitting onto the fitting uh, and seal it off and then we'll be done So as you can see, so as you can see, this fitting is now fitted in, and that crush washer has now gone around this piece of pipe. So we're all connected here, and now all we got to do is drop in the battery and get this puppy started. So that's what I'm going to do now. Um, if you look at these terminals, when I disconnected them, all the green color, so those all need to be cleaned up. Um, while you're out here, you should really just replace your terminals during this service as well. I know these are still in pretty good shape, but look at all these connectors are all corroded up and rusted up. What you'll want to do is you'll also want to check these wires. Just bend them back and forth and feel for brittleness, because they can rust from the inside out and still be uh, look like they're on the terminal so just go all the way down the wire and just check everything again they're not that expensive go down to AutoZone and and go ahead and just replace these making up terminal lugs is not that difficult um, these cars are very demanding on the electrical side they just do not like low voltage so <clears throat> anything that puts an extra draw on your system or your battery's not up to snuff or your alternator's not working properly um, it can cause all kinds of problems and you'll be chasing your tail until you fix some of these common problems which are the, the grounds going to the batteries, the grounds going back to the engine block back in here, the uh, grounds to the starter underneath which we'll have to look at later, but all these things really should be looked at and as cheap as this 5 or $10 cable is, uh, just replace them. So let me get the battery in, we'll start this thing up and we'll look what the oil pressures are in this car compared to the gauge. Uh, another big problem with these cars is that the oil pressure gauge uh, just does not uh, report a proper voltage. So let me get this in and we'll return. So I'm going to start the car now. I've got the gauge hooked up and we're going to look at the pressure when it's cold. And then we'll compare it against what the gauge says. So here we go. Car's in neutral. Well, looks like I disconnected the wrong gauge, so we're just gonna have to compare it afterwards. Anyway, the car's cold. And oil pressure I'm reading cold is about sixty-five, sixty-six psi. So oil pressure is reading really good. What we'll do is we'll let the car warm up and take another reading at normal operating temperature. NOT, and we'll see what the results are. So we have the car up to temperature now, and that's what we call normal operating temperature. That's about exactly where mine reads, so that's a good thing. And now let's go over to the oil pressure gauge and see what she reads at normal operating temperature. And We've got 28 PSI at idle at normal operating temperature. There's a lot of 
VR4 and 3S owners out there that would kill for that kind of oil pressure at Eight hundred, seven hundred and fifty RPM. So that's what you're shooting for. What I'll do next is I'll take the gauge out, hook up the solenoid back up, and then we'll compare it against what the gauge on the dash says. So he'll know what his mins and maxes are with this gauge without having to swap it out. So I'm gonna pause it now, put in the new solenoid, then we'll look at the gauge at both normal operating temperature and at cold idle start. So we're back at normal operating temperature. I thought I would record this while the engine was still warm. And then I'll do another recording when it's cold. So if you look at the oil pressure gauge, that's where he sits at idle at normal operating temperature. And idle is around 800 RPM. So I'll take one more reading at cold and we'll see where she sits then.